We've seen multi-dimensional arrays now, uh, at least two dimensions, but things extend uh, in the same way to three dimensions and four and more uh, dimensions. Uh, what I want to do now is uh, introduce you to uh, multi-level arrays, which are a little bit different. They try to do some similar things, but in a very different way, uh, using pointers rather than a contiguous allocation in memory. Let's take a look at a multi-level array. Here I'm showing three uh, one-dimensional arrays that we've, uh, that we've declared, uh, our zip digit arrays. Uh, one for each zip code of five digits each, okay? One-dimensional arrays. Uh, we're now going to declare a, a, a multi-level array called uh, univ uh, that is actually an array of pointers to integers. You notice the uh, star there in front of it. And it's going to have uh, uh, this number of elements, in this case set to three, and uh, the three elements will be our three uh, one-dimensional arrays uh, from above. And you'll see that that looks like it should be a two-dimensional array, right? We've just organized three zip codes into an array of uh, three elements, uh, each element having five digits. But uh, is this a two-dimensional array? Uh, well, it's not. It's a little bit different. Uh, and the reason it's different is because they, the, uh, the three, the three subarrays uh, do not have to be contiguous in memory. Uh, and they don't have to be in row major order uh, like we had before. In this case, you'll notice that the three arrays have been allocated to three different uh, locations in memory separately, each one of them in isolation. Uh, they were declared as separate arrays uh, initially. Then our array univ has uh, three pointers in it. Uh, it's an array of pointers, after all. And these will point to those, the beginning of each of those three one-dimensional arrays. But you'll notice not in any set uh, order. It doesn't expect them to be in a particular arrangement in memory. This turns out to be also the way Java represents arrays all the time. It does not have uh, really multi-dimensional arrays. It only has multi-level arrays. Uh, involving pointers like this, although this is made invisible in the language. But this is what's going on underneath. Okay, so um, our array univ has three elements. Each one of them is a pointer. That's four bytes long. And of course, it's a one-dimensional array of pointers. So they're represented one after the other in memory. Each one of them points to uh, an integer uh, the, basically the starting integer of the three one-dimensional arrays that we have. So let's uh, take a look at how access works uh, to this. So here we're going to have our, uh, the same procedure uh, we had before for getting a digit of a zip code, uh, only this time um, you'll notice although we uh, address it uh, looks the same, let's see what actual assembly code gets generated. Okay, so. Um, See, at the beginning, we'll have uh, the f our first index in the register ECX, and we're going to multiply that by 4 uh, and put the result in EDX. And why are we multiplying it by 4? Well, because we're indexing into our univ array, and we need to know uh, how much of an offset to have uh, to get the right pointer. Once we have that pointer, you'll notice we will use that We'll, to get that pointer, we will use that offset we've just computed, add it to the starting address of the array, and then uh, access that memory location. Ac this is actually reading that memory location, getting the pointer, and putting it into uh, EDX. Okay, so we've done one memory access already into the univ array to get the right pointer. Once we have the pointer, uh, we're going to uh, use um, that as uh, an offset to four times the other parameter, the other argument to this function, then uh, the index of the digit. Okay, and the four there is because, of course, we're doing integers and they're four uh, bytes each. Uh, so we're computing the address along the one-dimensional, uh, the offset in the one-dimensional array, adding that to the starting address. Uh, of the one-dimensional array that we just got from the univ array. 
So that gives us a second memory access. We're now going to that memory location and actually reading the digit. So the important thing to understand here is that in this case, we must do two memory reads. First, to get the address to the, to the row, the pointer to the row, and then access within that row. In the multidimensional case, we could do that in one address computation because we had the guarantee that each row followed one after the other. Okay, so uh, the access does look similar uh, in the C code. Okay, in fact, they look identical. Uh, but in reality, because of the different structure, here a contiguous arrangement in row major order, and here uh, first a level of pointers that get us to the start of the row, and then a one-dimensional array. Uh, this requires only one memory access. Uh, we can do compute the entire address in one expression. Uh, here we have to do it in two parts. First, to get the pointer, and then to add on the offset and access again. So two memory accesses. So these arrays are a little bit more expensive uh, in performance because we have to do those two memory accesses rather than one. Okay, let's complete this uh, video the same way we did the previous one with some examples of uh, accesses. Uh, so let's go to uni Univ 2.3. Uh, the address computation here, you'll notice is first uh, to get the, um, the starting address of the third element of the U Univ array. That would be the 56. That address is the UCB zip code. And then the offset within that, four times the second index of three. Uh, so that gives us an address of 68, which in fact yields the fourth digit of that zip code, or the number two. And that is absolutely guaranteed to always be the right answer because we're, we're doing the right uh, thing here. Let's uh, look at a case where we use an index that's a little off, this uh, one five. Okay, in this case, the same address computation is done uh, this time we yield an address of 36, uh, which is uh, uh, not part of the uh, one-dimensional array we were really going after. We were going after the second element of the univ array, which should have been uh, to the start of the CMU array. Uh, and then because we have an offset of five elements, we're going off the end of that array. And we go to address 36 out here. Turns out, by pure coincidence, uh, that is the first address of the UW zip code array. But that is a pure coincidence. It just happened to be that way. Uh, the UW array could have been somewhere else in memory, and then we wouldn't have had any idea what value uh, would have come up here. In this case, we do get the 9, but there's absolutely no guarantee that that will be the case if we run our program again. because we might end up in a different, uh, that UW array might end up in a different part of memory. Okay. Uh, let's do that 2 minus 1 example next. Again, the same address computation. We go to address 52, but that is outside of the element we were really trying to address. And again, it's only working out by coincidence that we get the 5. Uh, no guarantee at all that that would be uh, consistently that value. Similarly, for this one, we're even going outside of the university array to the next element, uh, where the next element would be. Uh, but who knows what's there and what address we'll be reading. That'll take us to some random part of memory. We'll then go four bytes before that because of the minus one. And uh, who knows what's there, even. Uh, so we have no idea what address it is. We have no idea what value is there, of course, uh, and no guarantee that anything will ever be consistent in this case. Uh, for the last one here, 112, uh, the same address computation yields a 7 uh, just because of pure coincidence that uh, there happened to be something there. But again, those arrays could have been shuffled around, so no guarantee on that either. Remember, again, the code doesn't do any bounds checking. C doesn't do that. We'll see later that Java does. Uh, and will actually give us a warning that we're accessing out of bounds. That's a very useful thing at an added cost of an extra check every time. C doesn't bother with that extra check, just does the address computation. All right, so the, ad the location of each lower level array 
in memory is not guaranteed in this case. In the previous uh, multidimensional case, we had a guarantee because of row major ordering in memory. Uh, in this time, uh, we do not. Uh, all we know is that there's a first set of, of, of pointers, and then we follow the pointer to the one-dimensional array. Uh, no guarantee of how those will end up in memory. All right. To do a little bit of a summarization of arrays in C, then, is uh, arrays themselves are a contiguous allocation uh, in memory. Uh, there is no bounds checking. Uh, we can usually treat uh, the array like a, uh, the array name like a pointer to the first element, and then elements are offset from that start of the array. Uh, Multi-dimensional arrays are contiguous in memory and in row major order. Uh, Multi-level arrays, these uh, ones we've just been discussing, are not contiguous. Not contiguous, and pointers are used between levels. So we have. Uh, many less guarantees about how things are arranged.